What is a modifier? Well, a modifier is a two digit code that gets added to the end of a CPT or a HCPCS code. If you're confused about modifiers, don't worry, because when I started out in the billing office before I became a certified coder, I was slapping modifiers in all kinds of places that they didn't belong. You can find most commonly used modifiers on the inner flap of your CPT book, but there's actually full descriptions of them in Appendix A of your CPT. There are some modifiers though that you won't find in your CPT book, so if you can't find them in CPT, there's a good chance you're gonna find them in your HCPCS book. The HCPCS book's gonna have a lot more in-depth modifiers, things like anatomical locations, or things that are insurance specific that you may have to go to those insurance websites to find out how exactly they want you to utilize those modifiers. Today, I'm gonna help clarify just a little bit about what modifiers are used for and some of the commonly used ones and some resources that you can use to find more information. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. So a modifier is a two digit code that gets added to a CPT or a HCPCS code, never a ICD code. It goes on box D of your 1500 form right next to that CPT or HCPCS code. And what it does is it adds a little bit of additional information or clarity regarding that CPT or HCPCS code without really changing the inherent description of that code. So a modifier modifies that CPT or HCPCS code. If you think of it kind of like photography, you're taking a picture of something, let's say it's a photo of the beach. Depending on the lens that you use, you can have a different outcome, but you're still taking a picture of the beach, right? So if you twist the lens one way, that picture is gonna go into focus and that's the right modifier. If you're using the right lens at the right clarity, that's the right modifier in that kind of scenario. But if you're using the wrong lens, you're gonna get a blurrier picture, right? And that's kind of what a modifier is. You're still taking the same picture, you're still using the same camera, but depending on those different little lens settings, you may get a different picture, right? You could have a panorama versus something very focused. Let's say, for example, a surgeon is doing a hernia repair, and when they go in and open up the patient, maybe that patient has a large body habitus, they had prior abdominal surgery, so there's scar tissue, they have to do a lysis of adhesions, and that surgery that normally takes them two hours took them three hours because of those additional complications. Well, we have a modifier for that modifier 22. So a modifier 22 is increased procedural service and that's what happened. The procedure was increased. So again, we're bringing that into a better focus. This wasn't a normal hernia repair. It was an increased hernia repair. Now, sometimes because the procedure was more difficult and we're putting on the modifier 22, insurances are gonna to wanna to see documentation because some insurances will actually pay a slight increase of what they normally would have paid because of the extra added complication. So most billing offices, if they have a modifier 22, will have some sort of system in place that they will automatically send the documentation with that claim. So some modifiers will explain that something was more complex or it was done on a certain part of the body or why something was not included in a normal global surgical package. And some modifiers can impact payment. Another example is modifier 62, which is a co-surgery. And for coding definition, that means that two surgeons are doing the same procedure as defined by a CPT code, and they're each gonna get paid 62.5% of the fee schedule for Medicare. So maybe one provider is doing the opening and closing, another is actually removing part of an organ. It's the same CPT code. They each bill the same CPT code with modifier 62 and they get paid 62.5% from Medicare. This can get confusing for providers and coders because the provider will often think that something is a co-surgery. Maybe they're doing a procedure on the wrist while someone else is doing a procedure on the leg, but those are two different CPT codes. So while they are working in tandem with another provider, another surgeon, it doesn't meet that coding definition of a co-surgery unless it's the same CPT code. And we do see that sometimes in coding, that clinical definitions don't always match up with coding definitions. Technically, from a clinical aspect, any piece of vascularized tissue is considered a flap, but for coding purposes, a flap is not always what a provider documents as a flap. We also have modifiers that can indicate things around a surgical package. So let's go back to our hernia repair. That patient's gonna have a 90 day global surgical package, meaning those routine follow-up appointments that they're gonna have with their provider to check their pain levels, to check that they're healing well, those are typically included in that payment for 90 days. But sometimes other things happen within that 90 days and they might be related or they might be not related to that initial surgery. 
For example, we have modifier 58, indicating that it was a staged or related procedure within that 90-day global. So it was a planned thing. I used to see this a lot in plastic surgery. We would have patients that had breast cancer. They would have a mastectomy and they would remove the breast and then place a tissue expander to expand the tissue back so they could put in a permanent breast implant after they had stretched the tissue out to the appropriate size. So after they had stretched the tissue out within that 90 days and they went back for that implant exchange, that was a planned procedure. We knew ahead of time that that was the plan, that we were going to remove the breast put in the tissue expander, and then replace it with a permanent implant. So while they're in that 90-day period where typically things related to that original procedure are going to be included, this was a planned procedure that we knew ahead of time that we were going to have to do at a certain interval for that patient. A 78 modifier would indicate that we're in the global period, but something happened that was related to this procedure, but it wasn't planned. So maybe the patient had a hematoma that need to be evacuated uh, the next day. So we went in and evacuated that hematoma. It was technically caused because of that original surgery. It was related to that original surgery, but we didn't plan that we were going to have to uh, remove that hematoma. 79 is when it is completely unrelated. So say a patient goes in for their right carpal tunnel surgery, and then we decide two months later we can do their left carpal tunnel surgery. That's not related because this is the right side, this is the left side, totally unrelated. Or maybe the patient goes in for a rotator cuff, and then two weeks later they broke their leg, totally unrelated to that original surgery. We also have modifiers for different anatomic locations. So you'll find ones for each of your fingers, each of your toes, your upper eyelids, lower eyelids, and then right, left, and bilateral. Now, when we talk about our RT for right and our LT for left and our 50 for bilateral, you have to consider things that you have almost a pair of. So I have two hands. I have a right hand, I have a left hand, I have a right eye, I have a left eye, I have a right leg, I have a left leg. I don't have a right and left trunk. I have one trunk. So even though something was maybe done on the right side of the trunk, that doesn't always mean that we need to put an RT modifier on it because we only have one trunk. Same thing with things like neck. You have a right side and left side of your neck, but you only have one neck. So the RT and LT are more for things that you have right and left of kidneys and so forth. Some of the encoder products that are out there, like you guys know I love my Codify with the AAPC. If you type in a CPT code, it'll give you the modifiers that are allowed to be used with that CPT code. They're not always 100% correct, but if I type in, for example, 14301, which is an adjacent tissue transfer of any area, you can see that the RT and LT is not on there because there's not a right and left any area. And you don't have to use something like a 50 modifier for bilateral if the CPT description itself says bilateral in it. And of course, just because something meets a coding guideline doesn't always mean that the insurance is going to accept it. So sometimes it might tell you in an encoder, oh yeah, you can put an RTLT on there, but the insurance is going to kick it out. By the way, if you haven't already, I would highly encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new episodes. And if you need more information on modifiers, and this is especially great if you already have an AAPC certification, if you go to my website, contempocoding.com, I have a free webinar on modifiers for the office. So a lot of things that you'll talk about in the office, like the 25 modifiers, the reduced services, and how to navigate different scenarios. Two of the biggest modifiers that we have problems with are 25 and 59. So 25 modifier only goes on an evaluation and management service. And when I say evaluation and management, I mean your evaluation and management section of CPT. So it doesn't always mean office visit, it doesn't mean inpatient visit, it means what's in this section here of your evaluation and management in CPT. So a 25 modifier can only go on an evaluation and management service when it is done as the same day as a significant and separately identifiable procedure. So let's say a patient's coming in for their routine visit to check on their chronic conditions, their diabetes, their hyperlipidemia, and while they're there, the provider goes, oh, you know what, there's something in your ear you have impacted cerumen, we're going to have to remove that. That's a significant separately identifiable procedure. They came in for management of their chronic conditions. They had a different procedure by a different CPT codes on the same day. Or maybe they came in for their chronic condition management and needed some sort of injection or a mole that looked suspicious had to be removed. That would be significant separately identifiable.
but every procedure code has a little bit of reimbursement built in for an evaluation and management because we're going to take a little bit of a history and we're going to take a little bit of an exam and make some medical decisions before doing any kind of procedure on a patient even if it's something simple like a skin tag removal i actually talk about this much more in depth in that webinar that i have modifiers for the medical office you should definitely check it out so i hope this video helped provide a great general overview of modifiers and when we use them definitely let me know in the comments below if there's specific modifiers you'd like to see me do videos on and let me know also if you'd like to see me do a video on the NCCI edit so when it says you can't build these two procedures together unless you use a modifier how you know what modifier to use and in what scenarios I will see you guys in the next video and until then just keep on coding on